Okay, so uh, for some reason, the program I used to record these videos just cut out in the middle of those problems. So I'm not going to redo them. I'm just going to start off where I did in two videos. So we're doing these polynomial inequalities. That, that's what these are called. These are all already on one side equals zero, already factors. A lot of that work, algebra works done for you. You got to watch out for this guy because it has an even power on it. If it has an odd power, no problem doesn't matter. Every extra power, it switches back, and it's going to go back through the axes or not. So we're, this is kind of like the x-axis of a complicated graph that this graph would be. But this is good enough to do the problem. So tell me what you're testing. I need to see that in your work. I like to test far right because usually it makes everything positive, 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 which means it's all positive. If you do something in the middle, some are positive, some are negative, then you also have to keep track of how many negatives there are. And if it turns out positive, negative, it's all positive. It's all positive. It's easy to determine very quick in your head if it's true or false. So this is false because positive is not less than zero. True, false, false. So you got to break it up there. Um, so we darken in the true ones, and the answer is two to three. Everything between two and three. That's it. Nowhere else. Okay. So... Um, now, 11 and 12, I'm going to come back to, okay? Let's do all these other ones first, and then we'll do 11 and 12. 11 and 12, um, just sort of letting you try it out, but I haven't technically shown you guys how to do it. So that'll be almost kind of like part of today's notes. In fact, I think today's, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably do it on today's notes, and then you can go back and try these. I might put these on tomorrow's video. Anyways, these down here, if it's linear... You can just get the X by itself and everything works out really nice. And you don't need to do a line check for that. Now, interval notation would be negative infinity to eight bracket. Now we always put parentheses on infinity, no matter what, because you can't get infinity. Now, this is a linear inequality, it's compound. This is like an and. You could go through and break it all up, but that'd be a lot of extra work for nothing. You want to get this X by itself in the middle. So you want to undo things left what if you undo in the middle? You got to do the left and the right. So it's going to be negative 12 and then uh, negative 16. And then you're going to divide by negative 2. Now, remember, when you divide and multiply both sides of an inequality by negative, you have to flip the inequalities. So you got to flip these. And if you forget that, to do that, your answer is probably going to look a little weird. So it's going to be like this, like this. Now, that looks pretty good. I mean, we usually like to do it left to right, smallest and biggest. So that's your answer. Interval notation be six to eight bracket. So interval notation is very convenient for quick way to write answers. Now, this is a polynomial inequality. I would not suggest that you try and take square to both sides or anything like that. So these ones, you want to move everything to one side first. Using algebra, we have subtract 2x from both sides to get it away from that side, get it to zero, factor it. If you can, if you can't, you got to use quadratic formula. So let's see, a negative 5 and a positive of 3, I think, works. Find the roots. Find the zeros. Are any of them to even powers? Nope. Put them on number line. Open. Uh, these are solid dots because it has an or equal to. Keep that going. Don't lose that. And then test the value. Uh, X equals 6. Uh, it's positive. It's true. False. True. That's the way you do it. Negative infinity, negative three. Bracket on the negative three because it's all a dot. Always parentheses on that. Union, five to positive infinity. That's your answer. All together, it's all one big answer. It's not two separate answers. Okay, here, again, it's a polynomial, uh, quadratic or higher, move everything on one side. Um, and then uh, get to zero. See if you can factor it. Um, so this one's a little harder. It's got to be like a, either a 6x and a 1x. You could try that. And it's got to be two numbers that multiply together to get negative 20. So one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, And we want to get 19 in the middle. So if we did 3 here, no. Um, so 4 and 5. If we did 5 here, that would be 30 minus 4 would be 26. If we did 5 here, 4 here, oh, I think that might work. Maybe if we put the 5 here, no, put the 4 here and the 5 here so that you get 24 minus 5 is 19. So x equals 5 sixths 
and x equals negative 4, no even powers. Uh, open dots for these guys. Uh, test a value. Tell me what you're testing. You're writing your work. X equals, I'm going to test 1, which is positive, positive, which is false, true, false. So your answer is negative 4 to 5, 6, parentheses. Okay? That's the quick way to do it. Number 17. Move everything on one side. X cubed plus 4X squared minus 9X minus 36 greater than 0. Now, this is a cubic, so you might have to do that rational root theorem thing. But another option is, is possible here. And let's see if we can try it. It's called grouping. But you have to have an even number of terms for it to pull it off. And what you do is you, if it's in standard form, you group the first two and you take out the GCF of those two. And you group the last two and you take out the GCF of those two at negative 9. And if you get the same thing inside left over, then you can keep going and essentially factor that out of the whole thing. And then you have an x squared minus 9 left over. Now, we can then continue to factor this. It would be x plus 3, x minus 3, difference of squares. So that's, you know, that will work sometimes. But most of the time, probably you have to do rational root theorem, which would work on this one too. It's just probably a little harder. So x equals negative 4 x equals negative 3, x equals positive 3, no even powers. So we're going to put these left to right, negative 4. These are open dots, smallest to biggest, test of value, x equals, I don't know, whatever, 4, positive, 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 true, false, true, false. So negative 4 to negative 3, parentheses, union, 3 to positive infinity, all one big answer. Next one, x cubed plus x squared minus 12 less than 0. Now this one we can't do grouping because it's an odd number of terms. So we have to rational root theorem. So we have to do a list of p over q values. Now these are your p values and these are your q values. p for the last one, q for the first one. And it's all the possible Root. So this would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. Those are all different numbers that can be multiplied with one of these other numbers as lists to get negative 12. Now 1 is easy because then you just divide all these by plus or minus 1, which is essentially that same list, right? So that if there's a 1 in front, it's kind of nice. And then we're going to go through and check these in our head. Just plug in positive 1. 1 plus 1 minus 12 is negative 10 is not 0. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1, that'd be negative 12. No, it's neither of those. Try 2. 8 plus 4 is 12 minus 12 is 0. So positive 2 works. So you find the first easy one. I just tried the small numbers, positive first, negative second, until you get one that gives you a 0. So I know that x minus 2 is a root in this because that this is a factor of this because that positive 2 is a root gives you 0. So then we're going to put all the coefficients, 1, 1, 0, negative 12 from the original polynomial. If there's a missing one, you got to put a 0. Then you're going to drop the first one down, and then you're going to multiply by the number in front, put that number here, and add them together. And keep going, add them together. Keep going, add them together. Then at the end... <laughs> I think I did something wrong. You should get zero here, but I didn't get zero, so don't fake it. What did I mess up? Oh, two times three is six. This is six, and two times six is 12. Like I thought, I actually, now if you don't get a zero here, you might have picked the wrong number or made a mistake in your work like I did or forgot a zero placeholder. Now, you factor the x minus 2 out. It doesn't disappear. It just goes in front like normal factoring. And then these guys are the coefficients of your new polynomial. And that first one is going to be 1 degree less than the original one. So that's going to be 1x squared plus 3x plus 6. This is the remainder. should be 0. It's gone. And then this, we could keep doing and do rational theorem again. Or if you were going to do it again, make a new shorter list with these. But once you get down to quadratic, you should just factor it. The normal way. So that's going to be um, two uh, pair of numbers that multiply together to get uh, positive 6 and add together 3. So is that 1 and 6? No. Is that 2 and 3? No. So we can't factor this one. So we're going to have to do quadratic formula, right? 
and that a rational root theorem is not going to help you with that anyway. So this is going to be x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over, don't forget this, 2 times a. So that's going to be negative 3 uh, plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24. And that's uh, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15. So this is going to be imaginary, negative 3 plus or minus i root 15. And one of the things that we're not going to be dealing with this year in calculus is imaginary numbers. And we're only looking for real numbers anyways right now. So this wouldn't even be a real x-intercept on the graph. So there's a real reason that it shouldn't show up on your number line. So our number line really just has this guy right here. Our number line is just 1.2. Test the value, still going to test. X equals 3. Um, everything is going to be positive, which is, we should still have this here, which is going to be false and then true. So here are your answers. So the answer is negative infinity to 2. So that had some kind of interesting things on it. Uh, number 19. Move it all to one side, standard form, subtract 9x, subtract 27, less than zero should still be there. We could try the grouping thing, x squared, x plus three, minus nine, x plus three. A grouping works, which is for sure gonna be easier than uh, rational root theorem. So you could do it like this, or you could do rational root theorem if you wanna get more practice with it. And then let's keep factoring this. This is gonna be x plus three, x minus three. And then, you might notice, hey, these guys are the same. So let's rewrite it like this to make sure we don't forget that there's an even power on it. So x equals negative three, x equals positive three, but this guy needs a star, it's a bounce, it bounces off the graph. We still put it on a line check, okay? And I'll show you in a second why it matters. So open dots for these guys. Don't forget about that guy. It's easy to miss it after you identify the tested value. Far right, it's my favorite on these kind of problems. Pause, 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 which is false, true, true. So your answers are negative infinity, negative three, parentheses, union, negative three to positive three. You have to break it up at negative three because it's an open dot. If it were a solid dot, you would just say negative infinity to three if it were a solid dot. So, um, anyways, uh, like I said, I think we should do the notes on these today for unit four first. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then you guys can go back and do these on last night's homework. And then I'll show you guys how to do these when we go over, um, assignment four. So that's it for that. And we'll do, we'll be doing, um, we'll be doing, uh, the, uh, unit four, the assignment for day four, uh, notes soon.